Now, in a free market, the exchange rate of a currency would simply be determined by the demand and supply factors we've explained in the previous lesson. When a nation allows its currency to depreciate or appreciate freely, we say it has what we call a free-floating or flexible exchange rate. In the real world, however, countries often have various reasons for intervening in the forex market. As with any other market, there are two main ways of doing this. We will examine this in this lesson. Now, firstly, a country can adopt what is known as a fixed or pegged exchange rate system. The main reason that this is done is to minimize the uncertainty and present, uh, sorry, prevent excessive fluctuations or destabilizing fluctuations in a country's exchange rate. Now recall that a country's exchange rate is the value of its currency in terms of another currency. Now this means that a nation's currency can be measured in reference to any other currency in the world. So rather than attempting to fix a currency at a specific rate relative to every single other currency in the world, which would be unfeasible, in the real world, currencies are usually pegged at a specific rate of exchange to one other currency, usually that of a major trading partner. So in order to maintain the exchange rate at a certain value, the central bank must intervene to buy or sell currencies. And we'll learn more about this in the next lesson. So examples of countries that did this uh, prior to 2005 are the Chinese and the Malaysians, which, who, whose currencies were both fixed to, United, to the US, United, uh, USD. Now, currently pegged currencies include the Hong Kong dollar, which is pegged at 7.8 per USD. Secondly, a country can also adopt a managed or dirty float exchange rate system. Now, this, the, this system lies in between the extremes formed by the free float and fixed exchange rate regimes. Now, naturally, almost all economies today adopt some form of a managed float system. Now, under this policy, the exchange rate of a country is allowed to fluctuate, but the central bank intervenes to prevent wild and excessive fluctuations. This essentially means that there is an acceptable band within which the currency is allowed to freely float, but beyond which the government will intervene. And the size of this band varies greatly between nations. And we'll learn more about these two interventionist systems and how they are maintained in the following lessons.